a lot of, but many times we take it for granted, right? You go to any phone, your mobile phone, you dial a number and it works. But there's so much that happens behind the scenes, like how the system will process that number. Is it local? Is it long distance? Where do I need to go to what cloud or ITSP, the provider, to make that call? And, it, and it's amazing that it just happens within seconds. So within the, the local system, like Cisco CUCM, uh, you have to configure that in such a way so when someone makes a call, that when they hit send, that it just like connects in seconds. Or you know, is it a secure call or um, whatever options you may need, or like call recording, for example. And these phones can behave in so many different ways. Like some, phone, some folks just want their phones to ring, or sometimes it's a call center environment. I want to present the caller with option one, two, and three, and four, and route the call a certain way. Do you want call recording? Um, sometimes I want four phones to ring at one time, not just one. Um, and then there's like reporting options because a lot of call center managers, for example, want to know how long are their agents talking, how um, how long before the how long does the phone ring before an agent picks it up. So there, there's a lot of information that goes within the environment to make sure that that call gets answered. Back in the day, for the old CCNA, they actually had a slice of pie for the collaboration or like the voice at that time. When they redefined the CCNA, they took that portion out. So uh, there is a, so what I did, I created a fundamental course uh, on CBT Nuggets. I'm, I'm not gonna call it CCNA collaboration, but that was my intention. And for someone who did not know anything about collaboration, that helped you build a foundation you needed to A, to do the job in your environment, but B, to also pursue the CCNP level certifications. That it's boring and it's really not because there's so many moving pieces that we just make the phones ring like often in environments. I, I will introduce myself on day one, like, oh, so you're the phone guy. But it's just so much more than phones. I, I mean, um, so it's a lot of moving pieces, which therefore makes it interesting and also challenging because it's, it's you know, like voicemail, for example, you, you know, you have several different systems involved, right? So the call is coming in through it some type of gateway, then going to this application, then that call is being transferred or sent over to another application. So troubleshooting and just, or even the configuration is quite interesting because you got to think about it in, in different platforms. And now with the cloud calling, either you're, you're still on-premise, on or everything's still within your data center, or it's out in web. It's calling, for example, or one of the more popular options, it's hybrid. So now you have an on-premise environment you have to manage along, along with the cloud. The cloud is just somebody else's data center at the end of the day. So um, I I love the on-premises stuff because that's what, you know, like that's what I know like, really well. But the cloud is pretty cool also. So it really boils down to what features does the business need? So um, the on-premise, the solution, the CCM has a lot of knobs, a lot of knobs. But the reality is, is that not every organization uses every knob, right? So a lot of times if the cloud web it's calling, for example, if it suits the needs for your environment, and then um, it's it's easier to mig to migrate that way. So it's always licensing, uh, you know, like the joke is you always, you, there should be a certification path to understand the licensing portion of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, there are costs involved, um, but some of the, being in Florida, like for example, a lot of the the on-premise stuff with hurricanes, you have to be like, oh, you know, how are we going to keep these systems up? Or not only in Florida or in any region in the globe where you may have a natural disaster, but if it's in the cloud, with all that redundancy, I mean, your, like, your uptime is going to be much higher. Many mistakes, many mistakes around my career, but um, some of the biggest ones is don't always assume it works. Um, you know, I'll give you an example. A lot of times the stuff that you and I do has to be at 1 o'clock in the morning, right, when the business is down or... Um, it, or if it's a 24 by 7 environment, you have this small maintenance window. I go the extra step of testing it if I can in lab environment. And uh, be, because sometimes, like, for example, you might execute something and see, like, a message. It's a lot easier to do some research on what that message is in, when you test it, opposed to 2 o'clock in the morning, you have, like, a window of two hours to get it done. Um, so that way, even the smallest thing, even if I know... The, well, the configuration at the back of my hand, I test it. Because sometimes you run into real funny stuff. This version along with this version, uh, you know, there's a bug or something like that. Because I found bugs and I go, but this is going so, and say, this is not working. They go, oh, 
there's a problem here. And again, no one wants to be no one wants to be up at three o'clock in the morning, you know, talking to like the VP of why the system is still down because you <laughs> encountered a problem, right? Um, the other thing, not really a mistake, is the assumption that, you know, I'm not smart enough to do that. I mean, yeah, you know, there are folks that have been doing this for a long time, but I tell people, anyone that will listen to me, everyone started somewhere. So, you know, it's got the dedication, like the work they put in. That's why I love certifications because is it about getting the sheet of paper and being a CCMP or CCIE? Absolutely. But the journey that you take to learn that is pretty awesome. And and what happens is, is you're on an outage call at 2 o'clock in the morning and something's not working. You're like, I know what that is. You know, I have to restart this service or do this configuration and people go, man, you're too smart. I would never have figured that out. It's not that. The journey I took to obtain that certification, understanding concepts and protocols, you know, it goes a long way. And that's what's going to separate you from everybody else in the field. So as far as the collaboration, it's amazing. Uh, you know, there are some the solutions that if you call into a call center, they can detect, oh, Mark's angry or Mark is not, uh, his voice is not pleasant. So let's route this call to like an agent that is really good at dealing with people who are like upset or AI can take a chat conversation, analyze that conversation and say, okay, this person probably needs help and support and not billing. So is it perfect at this point? I mean, I don't think it's perfect as of yet, but I it's extremely powerful and the potential of it is great, you know, like for many environments, but yeah. So uh, I use one basic example. So a lot of times with physical endpoints, uh, someone takes one model that you might have had and they have to reconfigure the whole entire phone, all these different settings when you, they deploy a new model. But uh, CUCM, for example, it, they have an option when you can just migrate the phone. So you build this predetermined profile, kind of, sort of. And you go, all right, Mark has model XYZ and it transfers everything over. So a lot, like a lot of times I'll walk into an, an environment where I'm like, so how do you migrate this new phone? Oh, it takes about 20 minutes. And I go, let me show you this. And I go, man, it's really cool. And so um, there, there's a lot of little things like that that helps you take something that's completely manual and just expedite, expedite the process, especially when you, you know, when you have to upgrade a thousand phones, for example, right? So it's, you know, like it makes it a lot easier. So, and I've been that guy where, you, where you've had like 50 phones on your desk with a scanner and, and labeling, and then you find out that you can do it a lot more quicker, <laughs> so that you, that you can do it. I, I mean, take it from me. If if I can do this, anyone can do it. But uh, but what what I really mean, as long as you have dedication and uh, and motivation, and I I mean it's it's possible. And, and I, I mean this is a great field to be in. The content that I the create, I try to do as much demos as possible because not only do I want to talk to you about how it works, but I want I want to show you how it works. Uh, it's an exciting field. I I love it. Again, I uh, I try to demystify that it's it's not a phone just ringing. And there's so much that goes above it. And um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. I see I see a lot of personalities, but like the ones that I see really succeed, like the guys and girls, is it's just open to just and and communicating. Like I love to sit in the room and say, okay, we need to deploy. This type of resource, what's the best way to go about it? And we whiteboard it or, you know, this may work or this may not work. Like, I don't go into a room saying my word is the final word because other people have interesting like, opinions. Or you can take 10 collaboration guys and girls and ask them, how did you deploy this technology? And I guarantee that most of them have done it a different way. And it really opens up your eyes because what happens is a lot of times we get stuck in one lane. So if you're open into discussing, you know, how we're going to implement a solution, I mean, it's only going to benefit you. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in an IT career or looking to brush up your IT skills, check out cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.